again. I really appreciate all of my subscribers and I'm still working on building the channel. Um, I will have really content coming for you guys. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit subscribe. Um, in this video, I'm going to go back to um, an earlier subject that I touched on when I first started the channel. I made a video about people pleasing and it was a very short video and I said that I would come back and finish that in another video. So I want to touch on people pleasing in this video and I think a lot of times people get really confused with statements like that. I don't think that a lot of people <clears throat> really understand how deep that statement goes and how toxic, how toxic it really is to be a people pleaser and what that really truly means, okay? It's not necessarily this surface idea of someone that's just, you know, going around and wanting to make everybody happy, you know, it, it has a much darker connotation to it, okay? A people pleaser, in, in a psychological context, if we want to get really deep about it, there are many different levels of it, but... It causes trouble for everyone involved, okay? And I'm going to explain how. <clears throat> when you are a person, a people pleaser generally has trouble being assertive. They have trouble saying no to others. They have trouble setting boundaries for their life. And there's no one size fits all for a person like this. This could be grandmother. Or this could be your brother, your boyfriend, girlfriend. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are a toxic person. You know, I'm not just necessarily referring to toxic or negative people. There are all types of people that are actually stuck in people-pleaser mode. Yes, and it has varying degrees. You know, just a lot of average, everyday people get stuck in people-pleaser mode not wanting to cause any waves, afraid to hurt someone's feelings, um, really feeling inside of themselves like if they say no, they won't be liked. We all want to be liked, okay? And this is on different levels. Some people who are people, people pleasers are very toxic. They have perhaps been through some type of trauma in their early life that is unhealed and they haven't worked on it and worked on those issues within themselves. And then they go around with all of these different defense mechanisms, manipulative ways of operating. And for them, for people like that, they have deep-rooted inferiority complexes. I mean, it can, it can go to very severe levels. Deep-rooted inferiority complexes. Um, they feel ashamed of themselves. They're carrying a lot of toxic shame. Um, and so they go around constantly doing things for others, looking for reward, looking for praise, attention-seeking, and it's not really a genuine type of help coming from them. The things that they go around doing, and, and this, in this context, I am referring to a very toxic individual, perhaps a narcissist, a narcissistic type, um, or someone who may have had, you know, problems in their early life that they have not healed or worked on, maybe an addict. I am referring to a negative and toxic individual who isn't working on themselves. Okay, oftentimes, yes, they will resort to people pleasing, but behind that is a very manipulative, um, it's almost like they are setting a trap for others. You know, this is 
this is a, what I'm talking about right now is when it's on a very severe level. Um, and it's horrible for everyone involved if you are around a people pleaser like that, especially one of the ones who has all kinds of mental and emotional problems, perhaps addictions, and they haven't worked on those things, they're refusing to work on those things or whatnot, and they are just, ooh, surrounded in a very toxic mentality. The type of people pleasing that they go around doing, it's just awful for everyone involved. Um, like I say, it involves them doing things for you in order to manipulate you. They will give you things um, and then two or three days later you'll notice you'll get a phone call hey could you do so and so and so and so and then every day after that and you've started something by accepting a gift from them you notice that they expect you to you're now working for them you know um, yeah a lot of times with dark and toxic people who are unhealed on a lot of issues they use people pleasing as a means to control others absolutely so you have to be aware you know you have to really be able to take a look at what is coming at you do can I trust this person you know how well do I know them where have they been what are they about why are they offering me this um, and that's just the way it is because yes they use people pleasing doing things for you giving you things just so that they can throw it up in your face later and obligate you to do things for them. Um, and so that they can control you. Sometimes they take it that far because, again, a lot of unhealed people feel very inferior about themselves. They don't, they don't have a high level of self-esteem. Um, they've got all these things going on inside and they need to feel superior to someone. And so by going around constantly doing things for others, they can actually feel superior to them. Yes, there are people that are actually like this. And sometimes they're not even aware of these patterns within themselves. They've been doing it so long that they're not even aware of it and how toxic it is. <clears throat> but yes, they'll go around doing things and it can get very twisted and very hard to understand, very complex. Um, but what is at the root of their actions, their motives, is to control you. Yes, to obligate you and control you and feel superior to someone. And you will find that after a certain amount of time, they will start throwing it back in your face, what they've done for you, given you. Um, or they will start working you and asking you for far more than they ever gave you. You know, they'll give you a little trinket. It's almost like a drug a drug dealer or something. You know, trying to get you hooked. They'll give you a little something, do a little something for you, a little favor, or give you something you enjoy, whatever. And then, once you have accepted that, you realize, wow, what have I done? What have I started here? Because you notice, all of a sudden, it's being thrown in your face. It's, you're getting phone calls, you're getting requests from them, all of a sudden, you're, in their eyes, you're obligated to them, and you're now working for them. So that's, that's one thing to look out for with people pleasing. It's horrible. It's, you know, and it's, it's, not only is it horrible for the person doing it, you know they must feel horrible on the inside, inferior and ashamed and dealing with all kinds of crap that they won't face, but how it affects the people that they are doing it to, the people they get wrapped up in that mess. So people pleasing is never ever a good thing, okay? So that's kind of one aspect of it, with a very toxic person who's got some issues, who isn't working on it, who is unhealed. They will use people pleasing as a way to control and manipulate others. Um, 
Now, there are people, like I said before, that are just average everyday people. Perhaps they haven't been through any trauma in their life, no childhood problems. You know, they're just pretty well balanced people. Their egos are pretty well balanced. You know, just going about their average everyday business. But even certain types of people that are not suffering from mental and emotional issues, people that I would say are not toxic, even they, yes, have trouble being assertive, setting boundaries, saying no, and that is also a form of people pleasing. They find themselves saying yes to things they don't really want to do, not really comfortable speaking up in situations where they need to speak up, and, you know, they just don't want to rock the boat. Well, you know, I thought that might hurt their feelings, so, you know, I went ahead and said yes, and I agreed with that, but I really don't care for that. It really makes me uncomfortable. Stop that. Stop that. Because that's not helping anyone. For you to be that timid, that mild, okay, that hurts my feelings. <laughs> that hurts more feelings than anything. For people that are that timid and have that much trouble being assertive, I've seen it, I can't tell you how many times. I've seen it dozens of times on <clears throat> just average everyday people. They didn't come from a bad background. They're very emotionally well regulated, just average everyday people. And the miscommunications that happen with these types of people. They are so mild-mannered and so meek and so afraid to assert themselves, so afraid that, that they're going to hurt somebody's feelings, so afraid that they won't be liked anymore. So they end up doing things for others that they don't want to do, that they're uncomfortable with, and they do it to not rock the boat, to please the other person. Once again, that is wrong. It is actually very toxic. A lot of you people out there think you're not toxic, think you are, you know, you've got all that under control. You're looking at everybody else going, oh, I don't do that. I'm not toxic. I'm not, you know, but you can't communicate for shit. You can't speak your mind. You can't say no. You can't set boundaries. You're not assertive. You have a lot of trouble being assertive. Oh my God, I can't tell you the times that has caused so much confusion. I know people that are so meek and so mild and so afraid to just say what they mean clearly, assertively, and politely that all the people involved won't even be talking to each other anymore because of one person who was too meek and too mild and literally too afraid to just express, this is what it is, this is how I feel, blah. Okay, that is another form of people pleasing. Where a person cannot be assertive to save their life, even on the smallest of things. And it causes so many problems, okay, for everyone around us. We must learn to be assertive. There is nothing wrong with being assertive. It's the toxic crowd that are going to try to fire back at you when you are being assertive. It's only a toxic person that is going to be offended by you being assertive. It is only a person who does not have your well-being or your best interest in mind if they are offended by you being assertive. Okay? Now, I know sometimes assertive personalities intimidate people. Let's not worry about that. It seems like those people, that's the kind of thing, I can't stand it when stuff like that happens. You know, it might be some really well-to-do, affluent person who's, you know, got everything really perfect in their life and they seem just like a great person. And it might be a person who isn't so affluent, who's struggling in life, who has all kinds of crap going on, but sometimes it turns out that, that the person who's struggling, who doesn't seem to have their life together, 
as opposed to the more affluent person who seems to have it all together, it turns out that the other person who's struggling has more emotional intelligence that the more, than the more affluent person. I've seen that shit happen countless times. These really well-to-do, you know, people have all, seem to have it all together and their life all put together and, you know, but they can't speak up and speak clearly and be assertive to save their damn life. And I'm looking at them like, you're the toxic one. You, you, you are dysfunctional. You are dysfunctional if you cannot learn to be assertive, okay? And for some of us, it doesn't come easily. I mean, it should, but it just doesn't. Depending on how you were raised, um, especially if you were raised in trauma or abuse, issues like that in your childhood. But even if you were just raised around parents who were mild, parents who they themselves had trouble being assertive. Perhaps they weren't abusive or anything, but they just did not set those types of examples for you. Perhaps your parents were really mild and, you know, afraid to speak up or perhaps introverted. I know we have a lot of introverts in the world. I'm introverted sometimes, quite introverted, but that doesn't mean that we can't learn to feel confident about being assertive. And don't carry any guilt about it. Don't carry any shame. Learning to be assertive. I started probably 25 years back. Off and on in therapy. Different literature and books. I took a speech communication course when I was in college. That was really helpful um, in this regard. Um, learning different communication styles. And being assertive was the best. There were four categories of different types of communications and I remember it listed aggressive, passive aggressive, passive or assertive. And out of those four, no, we don't want to be passive aggressive, indirect, say one thing to a person's face but yet behind their back, I don't like them, I'm just going to do something or, you know, we don't want to be passive aggressive. Um, we don't want to be too passive. We just sit back and let the world tell us what to do. We don't take any action at all. We don't speak out at all. We're just passive about it. We don't take it out in any manner. We just keep it inside. Okay. And the other one was aggressive. No, we do not want to come across as too aggressive. In your face, I demand what I want. I'm going to get all out of sorts and violent and demanding and pushy. No, we don't want to be aggressive either in our communication style. So what do we want to be? We want to be assertive. That was the best one out of the four and the healthiest one, which means we're going to speak up how we feel, what we need, what we want, what we prefer, what our boundaries are, and we're going to do so in a firm yet polite tone. That's right. We don't have to water ourselves down to, well, I'm so sorry, I won't be able to do that. We don't have to explain why we can't do things. Oh, well, I can't because I've got this appointment and I'm so sorry. That's expressing guilt. It's, it's, it's causing the situation to be worse than it has to be. A simple no will do. And I know that's so uncomfortable, isn't it? It's so uncomfortable for people. Even the average everyday person that's not struggling from mental and emotional issues or addictions or toxic thinking patterns, even the average everyday person, well-adjusted person, isn't it hard? Isn't it kind of uncomfortable? It is for the average everyday person to just say no. No, I can't do that. Don't even say sorry I can't do that. Why do we have to apologize? You know, and I, by doing this video, I'm reinforcing this within myself. These are things that I have been working on in myself for years because I did come from a dysfunctional upbringing. Yes. And I've had to learn to navigate and work on those issues and become functional with it. And so, oh God, I can remember back many, many years ago, 
how hard it was for me to be assertive in my teens and late teens and early 20s I was so intimidated by people growing up the way I did I was just so intimidated by people I couldn't speak up to people I couldn't assert what I wanted what I needed what I preferred what I didn't and I found myself in a lot of uncomfortable and even more painful situations so yes as the years went by I studied a lot read a lot and I increasing became increasingly more assertive and it's helped my life a great deal you know but with that a lot of people come to me to handle stuff for them because they don't want to be assertive you know hey I think everyone should work on being more assertive okay it is the healthiest way to communicate with others and back to the people pleasing I just wanted to finish up as promised because I already made the, the first video about it and yes even if you think you're not being toxic and you're not meaning any harm if you are a people pleaser whether you are um, a wounded person with issues who feels inferior inside and you go around doing things for others so that you can control and manipulate them and obligate them to you make yourself feel superior um, whether you're attention seeking or doing it for praise um, going around doing a bunch of things that you wouldn't normally be doing that's fake that's bullshit I've always been able to see through fake motives it's not really helping people it's not genuinely from your heart that you just want to see that other person succeed at whatever it is they're trying to accomplish so you are giving to them or boosting them um, it's just not a genuine exchange no it's manipulative and it's wrong that type of people pleasing people have to be aware of that okay it's wrong for everyone involved or whether you're just an average everyday human being who hasn't you're not really wounded you haven't really been through a lot of crap in your childhood you're pretty well regulated but you suffer from not being able to be assertive enough with others not being able to feel comfortable setting a boundary feeling like oh I'm gonna hurt somebody's feelings if I if I say no or I have to explain myself when people ask me to do things that I don't want to do um, oh that just wouldn't be right if I spoke up about how I felt if you're that person too, stop that that's also people pleasing and it's toxic it is toxic you need to know that for all you little meek little mild little introverts out there oh my goodness Namaste. I know we don't want to hurt people's feelings. Show kindness and compassion. Of course. But that doesn't mean that you have to sit there and do a bunch of things you don't want to do. And it doesn't mean <clears throat> you don't have a right to make yourself important and say no when you mean no. So people pleasing is bad news on all levels. And it can get deep, dark, and toxic. Um, and there is a category of people, I touched on it earlier, where they're kind of not aware. When I first got into therapy years and years and years back in my teens, some of these concepts were introduced to me, but it didn't click with me overnight. And, you know, the years went by and my therapist told me, you know, made me aware of some of the things I was running around doing. Oftentimes when a child grows up in an abusive family say alcoholic father or abusive mother um, drug addicts around them or abuse neglect was going on in the home whatever when a child grows up like that as time goes on they will go out and literally sort of relive those patterns all over again sometimes when a person is broken inside until they have completely healed those wounds not only will they act out those traumas that is why it's so important to get help and be in therapy but 
they will also go out and get into situations um, where they're going around trying to rescue everyone. That's right. Rescuers, people pleasers. Generally, when someone is doing that to excess, you can almost guarantee they have suffered a trauma in their life. That is um, indicative of deeper wounds somewhere back in their past that they are trying to heal and fix in themselves. When they run around rescuing, you know, they are constantly filling up their day living everyone else's life but their own. And that is people pleasing as well. Um, and I found myself doing that a lot in my life, especially my early life, my early 20s, up until my early 30s, years and years and years. You know, and my therapist began pointing this out more and more. Listen, I even had one of my mentors, the first time I met him, he said to me, you're a rescuer. So what happened to you? And, you know, I was still learning back then. I didn't have that deeper, quite, quite yet, that deeper insight and wisdom um, into myself even and into others as much as I do now. And boy, I was so amazed that he nailed it right on the head right when he met me. He read my energy. And this man didn't know me. Um, it was a chiropractor who I ended up going to for many, many, many years. But anyway, and it was really true. So that, I was in my early, mid-20s at that time. Between my therapist and a few other mentors that were pointing these things out to me, that is when it really became into my, it came into my awareness and it became clear to me, oh, okay, because of my childhood, alcoholic father, abusive father, mother was distant and not very protective. That created abandonment feelings and all kinds of things going on with me. Even though I was in and out of therapy and still and learning and working on it, I was acting out certain patterns. I would go and rescue alcoholic men, drug addicts. I was always on call for people. Oh, you know, what can I do for you? Sure, you need a ride. Oh, you need some food. I was always caretaking. You know, I had little children at the time, but I was also doing this for grown adults, wounded adults, toxic adults, adults who had been through similar things to me. And I think it's okay to have a soft spot for that. I always will have a soft spot for wounded children and people who grew up in child abuse. But... I have to be very careful. I had to become aware of those people-pleasing patterns and realize that that was detrimental to me. It wasn't the healthiest thing to be doing. It sets up it sets up bad energy for both people involved, for all people involved. That creates a dependency. If you're running around doing too much for people, that makes them dependent on you. It's going to come back on you. All of a sudden, you're overwhelmed. Too much burden. Um, you're focusing all of your time and energy on them and helping their life. And it is too much. And that's literally what starts to happen. And it happened to me. So I had to kind of start recognizing, oh, okay. I want to be a more genuine person. I want to help people just for the sake of of benefiting them, knowing that it's going to give them a boost onto a higher level of their journey, and that's it. I do not want to rescue, save, recreate my childhood with anyone. That's for therapy. So I started to make some changes when I really picked up on those patterns in myself. It was helpful. I'm so glad that I had people to point it out to me. So, oftentimes, people pleasing can also, and rescuing others too much, can be a way of avoiding our own trauma. Yes. Oftentimes, if you see someone running around, always there, always there, doing this, doing that for everybody else, you know they are avoiding something. They are avoiding a lot. 
and that they have some type of deep-rooted issue that they haven't fully healed or worked out or that they are in denial about altogether. So that's part of it as well, okay? There's a lot of different levels to the people-pleasing thing. Um, but I have examined several of them for you in this video and hopefully given you a little insight um, from my perspective and you know this is for entertainment uh, educational and entertainment purposes only I'm not a professional or anything like that but I hope that it's helped someone out there somewhere and I probably will wrap this up in a part three I have a few more things to say about the people pleasing bit but I really thank you for joining me and um, hit like, hit subscribe if you guys like my content, and I will definitely have more for you soon.